Beverly in West Yorkshire. Welcome to all of you. Let's hear about tonight's menus. Jane. I'm going to do a summery menu today with a hot spar asparagus and salmon mousse with a lemon sauce. A rack of Northumbrian lamb cooked with ginger, garlic and rum with potato puffs and green beans and to finish some summer fruit tartlets. Carol. Um, I'm starting off with a mixed green salad with parma ham and oyster mushrooms topped with poached quail's egg. And a fish main course, uh, salmon and monkfish roast with orange and herb stuffing served with green ginger wine baked cherry tomatoes, courgette ribbons, and saffron rice towels to follow. And then for my dessert, it's an individual tea cake and butter pudding with Cointreau cream. And Richard. Tonight I'm starting off with a saucisson Saint-Jacques, which is a king scallop sausage served with a, a light curry sauce. The main course is a noisette of lamb with a field mushroom stuffing and coated with thyme flowers. And that's served with a broccoli and carrot mousse and a chartreuse sauce and the sweet is a rum and almond cream with a caramel and apple sauce right well three spectacularly boozy menus for our judges to stagger through we shall wait with keen anticipation for the next two and a half hours best of luck to all of you it's now time to send you off to your kitchens so let's get cooking <laughs> There's nothing more comforting than the sound of someone else cooking, particularly when the someone else is tonight's guest, Pierre Kaufman. If you ask any chef in Britain who the best chef is, they always name Pierre. Welcome, and thank you for joining thank us you. tonight. Is home cooking very important to you? Is home cooking the basis of your restaurant cooking? Yes, from the beginning it is, because when you are a young boy, you, you start to eat the food from your mother and grandmother, and so that's where you are brought up with, with home, home cooking. But in fact, you know, there is different name, but at the end, there's only one type of cooking, is good cooking. You have recently joined the increasingly large ranks of, of cookbook writers. Yes. How should the amateur cook use recipes? Uh, f first, a cookery book is not, uh, is not a Bible. So it's just a guide. It, it will guide you to, to cook something, to prepare a meal. But uh, uh, you got you, you got to catch the spirit of the, of, of the, of the book, not... Uh, not word by word. If you, if you go word by word, you never do anything. Because by the time you read the, the last line, you completely forgot the first one. So you are completely lost. And always keep it simple. Try to do what you, what you like and uh, take, take some fun out of it. What do you do when everything goes wrong? I, uh, I try to swing very fast, you know, when everything goes wrong. But uh, I, try I hope it, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen very often. I don't remember when last time it did, it did happen, but it's just before it starts to go wrong, it, it starts to go wrong, you, you enjoy it, you know. Excellent, right. Well, <coughs> Pierre and I are just about to have a walk about the kitchens to chat to our competitors and see what they're up to. Then we'll be joined by Sir Terence Conran for the ultimate test. What does the food look like and how does it taste? But now I think we ought to get into the kitchens and see what's going on. <laughs> Jane, this looks like the, the rudiments of your exotic fruit tartlets. That's precisely right. What, yes. what have you got there? A bit of star fruit. Yes. Which I always think looks wonderful, but doesn't taste That's about That's why I'm only going to put a little bit in. <laughs> I see. Yeah, right. Right. Yes. 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 No taste at all. A little bit of kiwi fruit that does like rice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's but actually going to taste of something? Well, I have some nice melon. I have mm. some light cheese. Mm. I have some ripe peaches and some... Mm. Um, cherries. Some cherries. And I have some red currants from the garden. Splendid. Okay. And how are you going to assemble your tart then? Uh, with gusto. With gusto. Excellent. <laughs> and, and custard as well? No, or no. pastry cream? How's it going to with be? With fromage frais, uh, strained and flavoured with passion fruit juice at the bottom. It sounds beautiful. Splendid. Will your dissection look worthy of any forensic scientist? I did A-level biology. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> 
it does actually help when you come to cut things up, you know, where they... Uh... Yes, now, what do you think of the knife, the knife technique here? I quite like it. It's always a... Uh, it's completely different from what we do in the kitchen. You know, in the kitchen, we are always... We are much faster, and but that's the way... Uh, uh, you, got, you are always under pressure, you've got to be faster, and it's our full-time job. Excellent. Well, we shall leave you to progress at your civilised pace, and we'll be back later. Thank you. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Now, Carol is, is cooking an English equivalent of cuisine de grandma. This really is granny's cuisine, isn't it? This is the most, one of the most traditional English puddings. Bread and butter pudding with a twist. It's made with tea cakes, yeah. and also I put uh, a little bit of my tangerine and apricot spread to give it a little bit more of a bite. Mmm, gosh, that does smell absolutely yeah. wonderful. Yeah, is there a French equivalent of bread and butter pudding, or is that one of the, the ultimate English dishes? we got something similar, it's called uh, pain perdu. And uh, when you've got uh, too much bread in the house, you know, you just slice it, soak it in milk with the sugar, and uh, you put some eggs on and you fry it and sprinkle some sugar on top. And what other flavorings have you put in here, aside from your special tangerine <laughs> apricot spread? Is there any um, cinnamon in here? Or? No, it's just vanilla sugar. I'll flavor the, oh, my sugar with the vanilla. Okay. It's just um, free range eggs, so it gives it a lovely orangey color. Yep. Um, milk and cream, just pour it in there. I always like to leave it to soak for about, um, an hour to two hours as long as possible so it goes right through right to the, the bread, bread nice yes. and <laughs> we shall see you later then right. thank you richard hello there you're getting your seafood sausage ready that's right now what is this this stuff? this uh, simply just a roasting bag that i've just opened oh, it's out a roasting that, bag. okay that's so right. that's instead of wrapping it in cheesecloth or something that's right. equally cumbersome that's so right you've spread Spread the mousse. The mousse. This is the halibut mousse. Halibut mousse, uh, just lightly seasoned, touch of cream. Right. Um, and then, obviously, we're just uh, forming the sausage now. And then you're going to roll it up. That's right. Okay. Yep. Yep. Just pop a few prawns. A few prawns in there. How do you get the timing of the cooking right? Well, fortunately, you know, the concoction of the recipe means that the, 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 the mousse will cook and then remain cooked. Um, it won't overcook. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, whereas, whereas it, that actually protects the overcooking of the sort of more delicate seafood inside. I see. Okay, so it's the, the mousse in a way is protecting That's right. the, uh, yeah. the scallops from being from being rubberized. This is the delicate bit. Okay, and that's going into a sausage shape. Try and get out as much air out as possible. Yeah, that can interfere with the uh, event. You know, the end result. Aside from the intricacy of rolling us the darn thing, it's, a, it's actually quite, quite simple, straightforward. Quite dish. simple. Right. I suppose what we should do now is let's review the menus and yes. just give me some impressions mm. on them. Now, Joan, I, I know you're not a tremendous mousse fan, but Joan's starting off with a rather nice double decker mousse, which is salmon and asparagus yes. mousse. A marriage is that a marriage made in heaven salmon and asparagus yes it is yes uh, asparagus and salmon go quite well together you know they got the mild taste both of them and okay and then rack of northumbrian lamb with Cook, more, uh, cuisine de terroir yeah, that's, that's right good regional right. cooking and what what's nice is to see how they sh the way she prepares the, la the lamb you know she leave a lot of fat on uh, on top of it to, to give a good taste and then finally, exotic fruit tartlets. Is that quite a nicely put together? Yes, yeah, something light, light and uh, nice to look at. A lot of color, and uh, it, sh it should finish a meal quite well. Now, Carol's menu is in a way more sort of modern sounding because it's it's one of those slightly trendy mixed salads with parma ham and oyster mushrooms, a yeah. little quail's yeah. egg on top, yeah. then salmon and monkfish roast with orange and herb stuffing, yeah. and then a sort of tea cake yes. or bread and butter mm. pudding. She she da she's doing about the working in the opposite way than uh, John, where, where she starts with a mousse, something more rich, and uh, there we she starts with a salad and go the opposite way. Richard's menu, we've, we've watched him assembling his, his seafood sausage, yes. which is a nice light thing to begin with. Then a noisette of lamb stuffed with field mm. mushrooms and coated with, t with a thyme flower coat. Yes. <laughs> Sounds very sound, much. Sound beautiful, you know, that your, your imagination starts to work and uh, your, your, your saliva, uh, is coming and so you're, you're ready to eat. 
<laughs> and, <laughs> and then to satisfy even Pavlov's dogs, we would have rum <laughs> and almond cream with caramel and apple juice yes. sauce. Yeah, it sounds beautiful. I'm, I'm uh, waiting to, to try it. Mm, that smells wonderful, actually. It is so fresh. What have you got in that stuffing? I mean, there's uh, orange, yes. obviously. Uh, chopped ginger, egg, mm. breadcrumbs, uh, and then there's a mixture of uh, herbs, lovage, parsley, thyme, uh, a little bit of mint. Splendid. So what you've done now is you've got some that salmon tail fillets, yeah. and then you, you coat it with some of that stuffing, and then you're putting a slab of monkfish on top. That's right, yes. Then what? Uh, and then there's the juice of an orange and a little bit of uh, olive oil poured over and then just roasted in the oven. So it really is a roast and, you, and you're basting it with orange, orange and olive oil. Yes. It's quite easy to find all the ingredients where you come from. Very. It's a bit funny because we, I go to the market myself. Uh, mm. And on market you find things, you know, where from England, we went to France, I come back to England after, you know. Like we got mushrooms, you know. They, they pick them in Scotland, they go to Paris, and from Paris they export them back to England. Yeah. Which is absolutely crazy. Absolutely mad, yes. Which, which five items have you brought into the kitchens today? Well, the, the soil equipped, I've needed uh, five items. Um, I brought uh, my own favourite little uh, saucepan. And an electric knife. Can we see it? Yeah, certainly. Yes, for some reason, electric knives, I mean, they do have a connotation of slightly inept suburban carving. That's but, right, um, but this is an absolute wonder with the uh, moose. Oh, I've got to take the blade out uh, the blade well, off, not I? Doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I want to... Uh, there we go. It's a beast. Oh, God, yes, I think I've seen the video of that as well. <laughs> The, and these are the crouton baskets. Yes. They look like the sort of thing one used to take intelligence tests at school. <laughs> Did you pass it? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be too embarrassing to reveal the results. Do you cut your finger very often? No, no, no. I, uh, <laughs> You must have some good nights over that. Yeah, I've, yeah. Um, I've, every Christmas, I think, for the last five years, I've had the uh, you know, knife wrapped up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't find it boring, that type of uh, present, you know? Yeah. No, yeah? Be no, because it means so much to me. Yes. Um, yeah. to, uh, something like that, yeah. you know, being able to cut things properly. Well, they look fabulous. What are you painting them with? <laughs> Apricot glaze. Apricot glaze, okay. Yeah. And they're just going straight into the fridge now. Yes. And that's that. That's that. It's wonderful and fresh. What are these leaves? Uh, peony leaves. And I did check in peony the book leaves. to make sure they weren't poisonous. That was incredibly considerate of her. What a way to go. Killed, poisoned by a peony leaf underneath <coughs> a star fruit tart. Right, well, we're now fairly well advanced in tonight's competition, and it's time to meet our special guest judge for tonight, Sir Terence Conran. Terence, welcome. Hello, Lloyd. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I'm it, sure it's going to be a pleasure. <laughs> it's probably not terribly well known that, that you were rather successful as a dishwasher in your youth, weren't you? Plonger, yes. A plonger. Yep. Tell, tell, tell us about your time in the kitchens. Well, I wanted to learn a bit about how the restaurant business worked. I had an American girlfriend who'd um, been sent to do Europe by her dad, and um, she offered me a, um, a bed, or a part of it. And uh, so I went off to Paris and um, got a job in the Mediterranean restaurant, the Place Odeon, doing wa washing up. And I got to learn an awful lot about the restaurant business. When I first started Habitat back in 1964, um, 
you really couldn't buy a decent pan in this country. You couldn't buy a decent knife. There was one little tiny shop called Madame Cadex that uh, avid readers of Elizabeth David could discover, and it was about uh, four feet wide in Soho, and that was really the only place. So I thought uh, that I would try and uh, produce a really good, well thought out, solid battery to cuisine. The kitchen has now become much more technological. Everyone's got an electric food processor, processor yeah. as we hear whizzing away in the background. Mm -hmm. People have gelato makers, all that sort of thing. I often think that, you know, so many gadgets and processors, bits and pieces in kitchens, that by the time you've actually got them out, plugged them in, you yes, know, put the things them, in, washed them, washed them up, uh, yes, you know, with all the little, <laughs> little things like that. I mean, much yeah. quicker to do yeah. it with a knife or a oh, fork or a whisk yeah. or whatever. Mm. Is it fair to say that part of, the, of the, the pleasure of cooking is not just the cooking or the eating, but it's also the, the environment and the equipment? Exactly. I mean, a lot of people, you know, do woodworking or something like that as a hobby. You know, why shouldn't people get the same sort of pleasure out of the manual dexterity yeah. of cooking in a kitchen? Well, for, for a chef, it's very important to touch the food. Mm. You, know, you, you, got to, you feel the food through your, your, your skin, you know? And that's, that's uh, very important. I must interrupt you because the rather threatening big green 10 has appeared on the video wall, and that means that there's only 10 more minutes left for our contestants to finish cooking. Right, the lights are flashing, that means time's up, so abandon those redundant garlic presses, the cooking's over. In the red kitchen, Joan Bunting started with salmon and asparagus mousse in lemon sauce, then moved on to a rack of lamb with garlic, ginger and rum, served with potato puffs and Provencal beans. She finished with summer fruit tartlets. In the yellow kitchen, Carol Alexander prepared a salad with parma ham, oyster mushrooms, and quail's eggs. She moved on to salmon and monkfish roast with saffron rice towers, and finished with a tea cake and butter pudding with Cointreau cream. In the blue kitchen, Richard Sutton cooked saucisson Saint-Jacques with a light curry sauce, and followed it with a stuffed noisette of lamb served with a broccoli and carrot mousse. His pudding was rum and almond cream on caramel and apple sauce. Initial impressions? How, do, how does it look to you, Terence? Oh, I think quite nice. Um, quite simple. I mean, I don't personally like <coughs> to see the vegetables and the meat on the same plate together. I think they get in the way of each other. But um, like the blue and white china very much indeed. Yeah, jolly nice. Nice colours. They look beautiful. What we're going to taste first is the salmon and asparagus mousse with lemon sauce. Do you want to, do you want to dive in okay. first, Carol? Yeah, let's... And then it's just every man for himself. Mm -hmm. There's no polytest here. Uh, okay. It's good, yes. It's very good. Yes. Very good flavour. It's quite very good fresh indeed. tasting. It's yeah. not, not too creamy? No, 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 not at all, no. no. Now, I'm wondering, who's going to carve this, this construction? This a rack of lamb cooked with garlic, ginger, and rum. I think that um, Pierre ought to carve it, because it rather frightens me. Yeah. Good. Uh, very well cooked. Huh? Looking Excellent. Mmm. The meat is beautiful. Mm. Very well cooked. Just like a little bit of seasoning. I don't, I don't know what happened to the garlic, ginger, and rum. It seems to... We don't, yes, we don't really taste. You don't, you don't pick up any, any taste of that, but it's jolly nice lamb. It's taste pretty some forceful. of those beans. I'm not utterly thrilled with the beans, I must admit. They don't look very good, do they? No, do they, they don't. don't. I think they've been uh, slightly over, overwrought, those beans, perhaps. No, no, I don't think so. You know? Right? Maybe because yeah. they are mixed with tomato, so mm -hmm. the colour is not so it bright. Good. But, uh, mm. but I should have liked those as a dish by themselves. Yes. Right. Mm. Okay. So, so fairly, fairly top marks for this. Mm. Yes. 
Now, we're on to the exotic fruit tartlet, and, and these are exotic fruits and some fromage prey. I mean, they look sort of decorative and, you know, sort of um, glazed, mm. but it doesn't actually look like something that you want to disturb by eating it. Yeah. Yes, it is perhaps slightly too pretty, because fruit can be too I pretty. I mean, it's still got, you know, the, the bits of um, the, the red currant stalk on it. Yes, it's a bit like eating your way through two gardens. Hmm. It's a nice taste. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's nice not. to finish a meal with yeah. it. I mean, I can imagine the family would absolutely cheer if yeah, you brought that to the table. You are not allowed to drink one. Not <laughs> yet. Not yet. We don't, we don't want to dull our critical, what remain of our critical faculties. Um, what do you reckon? Is this pretty to you? It doesn't ask to be eaten. What do you think, Charles? I think it's terribly girly. You know, you don't feel as if you could take that napkin out and <laughs> put it and use it. And when you do take it out, I mean, look, I mean, so much energy goes into this sort of thing. You've got a terrible crumpled old napkin. You don't have your travel iron with you. <laughs> <laughs> it suits you. My only, um, one thing that worries me slightly, I like the sound of the salad, you know, Parma ham and oyster mushrooms, rather nice. Crouton. Lovely, it, the crouton. I yeah. like that very much. It looks as if it might be slightly hard to eat. I'm going to start. Okay, you can so start the demolishing the crouton. There's got to be a bit of an Attila the Hun on this one, I think. A bit like eating a salad sandwich, isn't it? Yes. It's so love the case, but... Yes, mm. you've got the crunchy part of the bread and the... Yeah. And the salad. Do you think the dressing could have been perhaps a little bit more forthcoming? No. I mean, it's a bit too much bread compared with the, mm. with the amount of salad. Exactly. I mean, it's a sort of restaurateur's mm. trick. To make it look enormous and there's actually nothing much right. there. Okay. On to the roast. This is a salmon and monkfish roast which has sort of orangey stuffing mm -hmm. and this very elaborate high-rise, which is known <laughs> as a saffron tower. <laughs> but again, you see, I think there's much too much on that plate. Mm. And then it's got <coughs> the English mm. flowers arguing with it as well. <laughs> What's wrong with a plain white plate? I'm still, I, you know, I'm, I'm one of these people who's not utterly convinced of the in intimate relationship between oranges and fish. But the fish is, is very well cooked, eh? Mm. It's beautiful. The salmon is mm. But yeah. it's so strong, that orange, that, mm. you know, I know monkfish is a sort of vehicle for all sorts of flavours, but... Yes. But this monk has been very nicely cooked, hasn't yes. it? Yes, all mean, the fish mm. is beautiful, mm. very moist. Yeah, just a bit too, too much garnish on the plate. See, I, I, I think that looks awfully nice. This is what? I forget. Mm. It's an individual bread and butter pudding made with tea cake and some orange apricot preserves. It's very good. Very, very good indeed. Yes. I think that's a really delicious. excellent pudding. Really delicious. In fact, we could use a few more of those. And onward. Oh. Now that looks very, very professional, doesn't it? Just as you're worried about flowery plates, I'm terrified of octagonal plates. You know that old rule of a restaurant, the more sides the plate has, the less food there is yeah. on it. But, uh, <laughs> so this is the seafood sausage. Nice colours, actually. I love Lovely. I mean, that's yeah. what I felt about the whole table. It was yeah. very fresh. Okay. Yeah. I think, Pierre. See, the, these... I feel the scallops perhaps might have suffered a little bit from hanging around under the lights, but... A bit dry, but... Good flavour. The flavour is good. Sauce is good. The fish is a bit of a scallop, is overcooked. Mm. But the taste of the sauce is. Noise out of lamb stuffed with field mushrooms and a thyme, a thyme flower coat. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does look good. It looks pretty inviting to me. Very good. Pretty gutsy. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's a flavorful, flavorful dish. And that doesn't. Um, doesn't taste much to me. No, I don't like mousses as a vegetable. I much prefer to have a carrot and, mm. and fresh beans. As a the three-star restaurant has done it again, mm. hasn't it? Not anymore, you see, the things are well, finished. Also. the elderly Americans <coughs> with no yeah. teeth. That they <laughs> have yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> these look good. They really look absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I think these look 
the way potatoes ought to look. I think they look mm. really good. Are they good? Mmm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I have another one of those. Mm. Mm. They are really good, those. It's all I want. Yeah. It's a big yeah, so yeah. Just those with the lamb would mm. have been fine. Mm. And, and oh, get the lamb. Just have those. <laughs> I've got to take them away from you. Mm, I know. Because we now have to have the rum and almond cream. Good. What is it, actually? How Maybe would you characterize it? I mean, I know it's called rum and almond cream, but mm. is it like a... It's almost... Is it sort of it's like, like a, a creme, creme caramel? caramel? Yes, sure. Yeah. Without the caramel. Without the caramel. Very pleasant. And the rum is not um, too, too much of a headbanger. Oh, it's oh. nicely judged. That's good. Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm. Very okay. good news. Well, now it's time for us to go off and have a judgely huddle. Oh, good. Can I take green potatoes with me? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we have deliberated, cogitated and digested and come to our conclusions. But before I tell you which of tonight's contestants will go through to the final round, I'd like some final impressions, tasteful ones, I hope, from tonight's two guests. Pierre? Yes. Uh, all the, the contests have been quite good, you know, and uh, if you take dishes by dishes, so some, uh, they should be all equals, I think. Terence? Well, I think the remarkable thing was that we were all absolutely agreeing on the individual dishes that we liked best. Uh, and our problem was to actually agree on the, uh, the winner. I mean, again, you know, we would have liked to have chosen the the rack of lamb and put it with um, Richard's potatoes. Um, we absolutely fell over ourselves with the bread and butter uh, puddings. I mean, there were a lot of very, very good things. Right. Well, it was once again one of our more difficult judgely decisions, but we felt after much deliberation that tonight's winner should be Joan Bunting. Many congratulations, Joan. She will go on to the final. Next week, Sir Roy Strong and Anton 